Hey guys, hey, it is approximately 10 14 p.m. Central Standard Time in the United States of America, okay? Particularly the Midwest. Welcome back to another episode of Surviving the Last Days podcast. I'm the host, Ashley Shante. We're going to keep it simple. Um, tonight, I'm going to be talking about the model prayer. Um, let me go ahead and pray the intro, and then we will get right into the topic at hand. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. Family, we are currently living in critical times and we must prepare for the arrival of the kingdom of Yah. Let's be watchmen of our savior. You are now listening to Surviving the Last Days podcast, a Bible-based podcast for kingdom preppers. Remnant of God, let's gather until that last trumpet sounds. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. All right. We are back again, guys. So let me just get prepared here. Um, pull up my notes. Oh, let's see. Like, I got some digital notes I have here. Let's see if it comes up. So we're going to be talking about the model prayer. Um, I recently went over the model prayer, like back to back. Some just, just something in my spirit just led me to go to the model prayer. You know, sometimes the Holy Spirit ministered to me, and I, and I be want to talk about one topic, and they be like, "No, nah, look at study this today." So I be like, "Okay." And um, that model prayer had came up a couple of times, I think, this year. But recently, I just saw it too, and I didn't know that I had it already memorized it. Uh, but I did because um so one of my favorite kingdom rappers uh named Brian Trejo his wife has a Facebook or whatever she uh went on Facebook she was very frantic and crying she made a video saying she had a dream in her dream the government was doing some things Uh, taking away people's privacy and things like that but in her dream the big message that stood out to me was that she said in her dream God told her to tell everybody to remember the model prayer and when you go through the model prayer you're like it's a lot of prayers you can say during a time of catastrophe and during a time of uh, tribulation But honestly, the model prayer is something to memorize uh, because, you know, that time and tribulation and chaos and when everything does hit the fan and the Antichrist movement really takes over, the Mark of the Beast system really takes over, um, you you probably won't have access to any Bibles, you know. um, Eventually, Christ followers are going to be outlawed. Churches are going to be, or congregation meetings are going to be outlawed. And so you might only remember or or have the ability to remember in such catastrophe uh, the model prayer, which is actually a suitable prayer to remember because you won't be worried about praying for tangible things like we pray for now. We'll just be praying for bread and water, you know, and when you go through that model prayer, it, it, it does pray for the most basic things, but the most important things uh, that we need to be praying for anyway. Um so I'm just going to recite the prayer. Hopefully I can find one closer to the KJV version because I know a lot of people like that King James version. 
uh, interpretation. Um, so, you know, the disciples are asking Christ, well, how shall we pray? And uh, you go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 through 13, our, the Mishiach, the Hamishiach, the anointed one, our King Jesus, he says, after this manner, pray, pray this, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us for our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Um, all praises to the most high God of Israel for that. Um, when you think about a time of tribulation, the Bible does tell you in the book of Revelations things that will happen. He causes all, both big and small, to take the mark, right? Bread will be worth a day's worth of word wages. Um, so many different things are going to happen in this great tribulation. Um, the Bible tells you the truth. And in the Bible, I know that we have some rapture believers. I'm not one of them. Um, the scriptures don't really talk about being exempt from this tribulation. If anything, you're going to have to die for Christ as a Christian or a Christ follower or being a part of the body of Christ. Uh, the Bible really doesn't say anything about you being exempt. In fact, Christ told the disciples, uh, you know, just pray that you don't have to uh, go through this like during the Sabbath or, but he did mainly Christ told the, the followers to endure to the end. Um, enduring something means you're going to be a part of it. You're not going to be raptured out, right? So we're going to have to endure to the end as Christ followers. We're going to have to find our group, whether that be your religious group that can feed you water, uh, that can give you uh, prayer. Um, we probably won't have access to Bibles. It'll probably be illegal to meet underground to form congregations. Uh, the Great Tribulation, uh, you know, it's many movies on it. Um, when everything hits the fan, um, when our government basically turns on us as Christ followers, um, it's a lot that's going to happen that won't, it's going to be very uncomfortable. And, um, it's not something you rapture out of. It's not something you escape. If you're alive during that time, you will experience what's going on and you will have to endure to the end. And that's not to be fear mongering anybody, but that just lets you know that Christ, the kingdom is near. Amen. It lets you know the kingdom is near. That means no more bad relationships, right? That means no more foster children, right? That means no more abandoned children from fathers. Okay. That means no more disease. Okay. That means no more sickness, right? That means no more disability. That means no more struggle financially and poverty. So when this kingdom come, even though we have to go through this tribulation, when this kingdom come, it's going to be marvelous. Amen. It's going to be just like Ezekiel described with that last temple that, that will be built. It's going to have water flowing through it that's going to heal people at the drop of a dime. <laughs> okay. Um, the kingdom coming is the bigger picture, right? But just no, but basically the message of the podcast is to say that memorize the model prayer. Go back and look at the basics, right? I know we get into prophecy and we get into the counting the days and we get into the names of what is Yahweh's really name, his real name, how should we pronounce? We get into all that other stuff. But let's remember the model prayer because during the Great Tribulation, that's what we're going to need to remember with the quickness. Our Father, thou art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, you know? And you're going to need to say that 
probably at the drop of a dime. Anytime you're going through something in that great tribulation, you're going to need to say that. You might need to start practicing that now. When you're in traffic and you're driving and somebody having road rage cussing you out, instead of cussing that person back out, say, Our Father, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. I pray that your kingdom come, that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father, give me today my daily bread. Amen. Forgive my debts, Father, as I forgive those who are in debt with me. Or forgive my trespasses as I forgive those who trespass me. Praise God. Um, And lead me not into temptation, Father, but deliver me from evil. Or your Bible might say, deliver me from the devil's snares. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for to you. To you be all the glory. Amen. Forever and ever. Amen. So you want to say that prayer. You want to get in practice of that prayer. Um, you want to start using that prayer repetitiously, religiously. Uh, you want to start that prayer anytime you get angry, anytime you get frustrated, anytime you're going through something and you feel defeated, just go back to that prayer. Because in the Great Tribulation, as uh, Brian Trejo's wife said on Facebook about her dream that God told her to tell everybody, remember that prayer? In the Great Tribulation, we're going to need to resort to that prayer. We not may, we might not be in our right minds enough to think of a, 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 the kind of prayers we pray right now. Like, we have some good prayers we didn't say it, but in a time of catastrophe, in a time of, in the heat of uh, being accused, amen, you're going to need to bow down and drop to your knees and, and say the quickest prayer possible. And that's the basic prayer, which is, give me today my daily bread, because bread is going to be hard to find in the last days of the we are in the last of the last days but in the great tribulation right before the kingdom come uh where the kingdom uh come to earth amen uh you know it's gonna be food rations you know they're already talking about uh putting a chip in people's palms so they can pay by palm and so that the government can have all access to your information uh you know they already talking about a super governmental control and as Christians, you know, they might put in laws that we can't pray. They might put in laws we can't have a Bible. They might put in laws that we can't even serve God. You know, we we are under the land of captivity and they can make any laws that they choose. You know, um, this is Babylon. Amen. And when you remember when Nebuchadnezzar told the three Hebrew boys, you have to bow down and show an act of worship to this statue. We're going to have to st- we're going to have to stand on business like them three Hebrew boys. We're going to stand 10 feet, do- t- what they say, 10 toes down. Okay. We're going to have to stand on business and you can't be scared at that point. So you need to go ahead and choose your soldiers now. That's another thing. Go ahead and choose your soldiers now. Anybody that's buckling now for for anything, the vaccine or anything you see them buckling, get away from them. Go find you some true soldiers because you're going to need them. Go find you some true soldiers. In the end, in the end we're going to need true soldiers. We ain't, we we ain't going to need church people now. Not those that play in church that don't know what to do if they ain't get, can't go to a building that just go to church to lollygag and mingle. Uh, we're going to need some real soldiers. Amen. We're going to need some foot soldiers. Uh, foot soldiers for Christ would be better to to, to describe them, you know. Um, we're going to need some people that ain't scared to die about Christ, you know. Um, and they ain't got no attachment to this worldly government or worldly things in it, okay. They all kingdom all day, right. So you're going to have to pray for that 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 one or two, three people, you're going to get on the land with them, one or two, three people. You're going to have to start the body of Christ and the set apart people, the last trumpet society. We all going to have to come together, guys. We're going to start talking to people. We're going to start talking to each other. We I know we don't trust people and we don't like to mingle with people because people so wishy washy these last days. But us being a set apart, we're going to have to come together to survive, at least for survival, you know. Um, but anyway, y'all. I just wanted to talk about the model prayer, telling y'all to remember it. I remembered it. I didn't even know I was surprised myself. I remembered it without looking it up when 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 I was provoked to look it to to remember it, and uh, I was pretty proud of myself. So, y'all pray, stay prayed up. Y'all seek the kingdom first, as the scripture says. There are distractions, whether it be romantic distractions, whether it be job distractions, whether it be financial disruption. There are disruptions, distractions. But please, 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 please never forget the kingdom. Come back to the kingdom. Always put the kingdom first, even if it's three days out of week, even if it's two days out of week. Just try to stay kingdom first. All right, guys, signing off. Bye-bye for now.